Hello. Sorry, Alan. This is for you. Actually, it's probably more for everyone else. I've done the comment to Alan and he will have understood it. <laughs> right, I've got two things up on my screen. One, I've, I've been for uh, doing serious investigation. <laughs> Not really, I was just absolutely amazed by this free man stuff, the conspiracy theory stuff. So I, I've, I've looked <laughs> not into it more, I've looked into their videos a bit more and they are really um, most entertaining. I'll tell you what, one thing that they do which is very interesting or informative, at the beginning of the show the guest comes on and they go through the normal what I call stroking um, thing where they say, hey, hello, how are you? Hey, how, how are you? Normal, normal. And they say, well, thanks for coming on the show. And the other one then says, oh, no, really, my pleasure and all that. And you can just feel the thing going whoop, 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 whoop. As in, you're not going to ask me any silly questions, are you? And the other one saying by by doing the right replies going no no I'm going to let you speak your absolute most ridiculous nonsense anybody's ever heard oh, okay then right so they've kind of got that established and the woof they go and boy there's some cookie stuff goes on um, so I was scrolling watching this video and then scrolling down in the new YouTube the new YouTube way um, which way you get the videos underneath before you get to comments. Now, listening and scrolling down and seeing more examples of what they've got on this. And it goes, Satanic Ritual to Destroy the Universe by Tracy Twyman. I imagine she's the guest. Pizzagate, The Deep State and Solutions, Kathy O'Brien. And being slightly sexist, I thought, well, good God, women are into this as well alien human hybrids and all this so I was just going down all this and then I bumped into the comments so I thought while I'm here I'll read the top comment uh, it goes like this they cannot hack us brackets meaning interfere with our lives if you vibrate at a higher level than them this is how Many people who speak the truth survive. You vibrate at a higher level by doing things that are good for you and others. Build up that chi energy by doing good deeds. Help others, but most importantly, before doing that, help yourself by eating good. Right. I know it's a bit naughty to link that to Alan. But it was reading that that I thought, oh no, I will go back and make this video. Alan wrote earlier, hello again, hello again Alan. The na Nazi troop analogy is an effective one. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Just like the possible fact that, regardless of it being the case that all those constituting the television are just making a living, the output is bad, regardless of it being the case that all those factors constituting behaviours are just determined. So I'm going, all right, this is, wasn't a determined video, we'd finished that series, but okay. You were big into that series, Alan, so go ahead, my son. The outputs are either negative or positive in effect, i.e. it's just the universe uni universing, but some outputs are negative. And I go, okay, right up. But then there's the trouble, uh, troublesome last paragraph, which meant that I couldn't let it drop. Bad outputs should be critically scrutinized, minimized and deterred, regardless of their causal constitution etc and I go oh dear 
And it was going so well with Alan. This is a classic example of the mental math thing that I talked about, where you do the, the digits and the tens, then you move on to work out the hundreds, but you've got to remember to remember to keep the result of the tens and the digits in your short-term memory so you can add it to the hundred. You've got to keep it there. This has got to be there. Right. I must have done a couple of hours, maybe even three hours, I don't know, but going through what must have been for most everybody a painfully slow thing about Joe and Jane and all the rest of it, where we established that Joe and Jane could not do anything different to what they did. And that was to represent a base where I could then extrapolate to everything everybody does at all times. There's nothing actually that you or I or anybody could ever do different. Right. That's the thing, which is the digits and the tens that we hold in our memory while we're talking in a deterministic sort of way. Alan uses a determ the determinism word in, the, in paragraph two and then comes with bad outputs should be critically scrutinized, etc. And we've got this word should, which he advised me, I think it was that word where he advised me and I tried to go to um, should would stands in for it would be better if it had not or if it had been so what Alan's saying is outputs it would be better if we critically scrutinize outputs that's the hundreds totally forgetting the digits and the tens where the should has been annihilated there is no should there is no could have been better than would have been better than there's no if I was just thinking there can I say but if there's no but uh, because you go if button if button should have there's no if buts and should haves in other words the word um, the bad output should be critically scrutinized and what we established is the bad outputs either will be scrutinized or the bad outputs will not be scrutinized dependent on what happened to the scrutinizer or non-scrutinizer in their entire um, life world timeline. They either will criticize or they won't criticize. Now, when we're not having, you, in other words, you don't use determinism word in the second paragraph, when we're not having that, we can put it to the side and we, we, we talk. Well, yes, it would be better if this had happened or that had happened or whatever. But in the context of determinism, which you've used in the second paragraph, holding in mind determinism, you don't have shoulds. You've got to put determinism back in a book somewhere, close the cover and put it back on the shelf. And then you can go, you should do that, you shouldn't do that, this, that and the other. But in the context of determinism, there is no should. There is either will happen due to the timeline or will not happen due to the timeline. So, I could go on and expand how, even if you've got your determinist book on the shelf, how it's still pertinent to every single occasion that we ever come across. But we'll just leave that and say, I'm picking you up because you had the determinism book out. And if you've got the determinism book out, you don't have shoulds. All you accept is life is how it turned out. The universe, universed, and that happened. That's all you can possibly say 
if you accept the determinism um, concept, if you've got the determinism book open. This is why most people close it very quickly, put it on the shelf and never look at it again, because all it leaves you with is the saying that the universe is universing and it will get on universing. And in this context, it will get on universing to critically scrutinized bad outputs or it will not cr critically scrutinized bad outputs, dependent on what the universe has been up to in the past and the way it's flowing forward. So I'm sorry about that, Alan, but as I said in my reply to you, you started it.